So this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of a meeting because normally we have a presenter who's presenting. But um, Tim and I were talking, have been talking for almost a year now about um, engagement and collaboration and innovation, how that works in this group and who knows each other and who doesn't know each other. And um, with COVID, there's been a, a bit of a challenge of people uh, wanting or being able to provide updates or summary of what they're doing with their projects in the space. And so we decided that maybe one of the good things that we could be doing right now since people are quite separated is having a session where we actually get to know each other a little bit. And so each of us will have the opportunity to do a teeny little presentation just verbally. If you have slides in handy, feel free to use them, but um, you know, maybe a, a little five minute discussion, two minute discussion, 10 minute discussion on what you're up to. Um, my, the, the thing that I'm most interested in is what's your superpower? Like, what is it that you are really passionate about and what you're really like, what you're kind of, um, what's behind everything that you're doing and then what you are offering into the ecosystem. And when I'm saying ecosystem, cause that's a big term, uh, the, um, the, not the whole community of sustainable business models, but this ecosystem of the strongly sustainable business model group. And then I'm hoping that people will have an ask or need or some other kind of comment on how we can work together in the ecosystem. And then we'll just have an a little bit of an open discussion about what people are seeking and needing in terms of how we can, um, the things that Tim and I could be doing better or differently or more innovatively to engage the members of the group. Our LinkedIn group is around 1900 plus. And so we're going to, um, Tim and I are really striving in this coming year to really uh, help with the activation and animation of the group. All right, so I'm gonna start the meeting similar to what we, how we normally start the meeting. And uh, so that we have our, our traditional greeting as part of our recording, and then we'll move into our, the, how we'll sort of structure the, the session after that. <clears throat> I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to all of the current and new members and, and longtime members of the Strong Sustainable Business Model Group. This is the 94th meeting of the group, and we are, I'm your host today, I'm facilitating, so Tim can't be here, and um, <coughs> So uh, I'm going to be facilitating on my own. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And we hope that you find something useful or helpful or hopeful out of the kind of meeting that we're having today. We, we typically open our meetings as a matter of course with the um, acknowledgements around Truth and, Recon Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada by acknowledging the First Nations that we are in the territory that is now Canada, which long before the settlers were here. And so obviously this applies to us and anybody who's international, we hope that you take some time today to think about how um, this acknowledgement might, might apply to where you are in your um, hometown and your homeland. Wherever we are today, this in fact is sacred land and we are privileged to be here today. This land, the nearby lakes and the sea, depending on where you are, has supported human beings for thousands of years and is rich in history, knowledge and tradition. We are privileged to be the beneficiary and stewards of all that has come before on behalf of the seven generations to come. Seven generations is our grandchildren's grandchildren and that's not actually that far into the future. We invite you to consider in your place how you honor and respect peoples indigenous to your place. And that, of course, may include yourself. Today, each place around the world is increasingly home to peoples from across the world and where each race will have the opportunity to be as we are today. <clears throat> this kind of social acknowledgement, this, this kind of social acknowledgement of our privilege, we want to acknowledge that, oh, never mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that part. So I'm in the, uh, I'm in the territory of um, the Bow River and the, the tree of meniscus. And um, thinking about where you are today is something that you can do personally. So a few housekeeping items. Um, in case of emergency, do you all know where your exits are? <laughs> all right, so let me find my screen here. Oh, there's our lags, no, sorry. <clears throat> so I'm in Calgary today and um, 
everybody else around the world will be um, answering a little bit of a poll. We're going to do some experimentation um, with polling today. So here is a poll. And you're, you're entering your specific information in your introduction from for where you are. And um, is everyone seeing the poll? So our hope is, is that as we start activating our network that is very global, that um, in our future meetings that this um, chart will be much more distributed and, and dispersed and we'll have, a, we'll have a much more broader idea of where people are, how they're activating and how they're entering into the ecosystem. So we're, we're pretty fairly in, in interestingly distributed. So the Strong and Sustainable Business Model Group is a global community of innovation practice. We're a tribe of over 1900 expert practitioners, researchers, and students from around the world. Um, they're hosted out of OCAD University Strategic, Strategic Innovation Lab, and that's in Toronto. They've been doing that since 2012 out of Toronto. Some of the things that we do, oh, so the, we have a wiki. The, wiki, the Strong and Sustainable Business Model Wiki is where um, um, all of the information on our meetings and our um, uh, uh, initiatives. So each of the uh, many of the people that are part of this group and activated in the group have initiatives that are that are located on the wiki. So you'll be able to see that there. And we also have a Google Drive. And when you go to the Google Drive, you actually have access to uh, all of the information. It's open and, and available for all the members that are part of the Strong Sustainable Business Model Group. So we hope that you go there and, and connect and, and be a part of um, um, sharing information into the ecosystem as well as uh, finding the information that you need. And if you need any help finding information, Tim and I are always available to answer any questions. We actually have, also have a Lumio group, which isn't part of what's on here. And we have a, um, there's another group out there that we're part of. I can't remember what, what it is off the top of my head. I'm gonna, now that I'm hearing this, I'm gonna update the slides to include that so that you're aware of it if, if you're part of <clears throat> those other networks. <coughs> So we're part of a larger movement, which is uh, we're starting to refer to as the movement for flourishing enterprises and the logos that you see on the screen here are not only initiatives of our members, but of other initiatives and organizations that we see that are already self identified with the purpose of flourishing and with the um, objective of flourishing or that we see that are aligning with this purpose. So even if you've not self identified it with it yet it's a growing community and there's no really famous names here yet, although UNITAR. I think that must be on the other side here. So on this, on this page here, you can see that Unitar and, well, you know, people don't maybe think of these as famous names, but I'm already thinking of some of these as famous names um, already. So just for your own information. <clears throat> So basically, we're hoping this is going to change slowly over time as, as these um, all of these logos become uh, much more recognized globally. That would be great. And of course, we're in sync and going beyond the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is an amazing gift to humanity from ourselves, um, but also uh, well understood as not scientifically feasible to achievement, achieve them. Uh, and we're going to go into, might go into detail on that through our discussion, we might be talking about the development goals our 3.0 and um, some of the other um, uh, projects and initiatives that are out there. <clears throat> Doing well to do good. These are some of the, the, the main active players that are in our hub for sustainability. My notes don't match these slides. Um, I must be one set of slides behind. <clears throat> so these are some of the, the initiatives and, and uh, events that have been happening in the, in the near future. And you can see that some of them that are coming up in 2021, the Mars Conference in Toronto, June uh, 21st to 23rd, as an example. <coughs> RSD is happening now, it's this week. Oh, right. What is RSD yep. for? Yeah. Actually, the dates are a little off there. Yeah, since it's online, it's been going since um, from the 9th to the 17th. Can you add a link to the chat in the chat so if people will have time to go there and then if they have weren't aware of it, they can jump in? Yeah, I mean, it's going on through Friday and we've had we had sessions yesterday on on circular economy, um, flourishing societies. <laughs> we have we've had workshops in circularity. We had the keynote 
uh, Von, Dr. Vandana Shiva yesterday. Um, so yeah, joining even now, it's still cheap. It's still um, um, for professionals, $85 for, for everything. And, and it will all be on, on uh, video too. So I'll put it in chat. 85 Canadian or euros? Oh, you, uh, for professionals, I think that about, um, yeah, I think US. Actually, okay. about that, yeah. Perfect. Under 100. <laughs> Less so, for students. Perfect. So oh, um, Nicole put it in the chat. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so the community animators are Tim and myself, and we are just members of the group that have um, offered to uh, donate our time to participate in trying to, um, number one, organize these meetings, and number two, our really uh, strong goal is to figure out how to animate and engage um, the collective and collaboration that can be happening um, as part of um, being part of a group. So that's what we're, we're really interested in. Um, so because this is a different kind of a meeting, I've added this slide. Um, um, there might be very new members uh, that are participating today and there might be people that have been part of the founding uh, discussions of uh, what the Strong and Sustainable Business Model Group is in the Flourishing Enterprise Institute. And somebody who has more uh, stronger uh, history on that, we can talk about that a little bit later. But I just want to make sure um, this is the Chinese symbol for listen, which is ears, eyes, undivided attention, and heart. And the reason I put this here is we just want us to remember to be gentle in our conversation that uh, if somebody doesn't know a term or a phrase or is not using language that is typical for this type of group that we want to be supportive and inclusive and uh, encouraging of people who are members of the group, no matter what uh, space in the continuum of where uh, where they're coming from and where they're going and 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 where they are now and in, the, in their striving for a strongly sustainable business models and all of the other things that go around that so you don't know where people have come from and we don't know where they've been and so we want to just be mindful of that uh, as we go into uh, just having open conversation so i'm going to go back to the first page because something i forgot to mention is i added a little elmo here so i have a little elmo that's with me today and I use ELMO when I'm facilitating um, any kind of group meetings and um, ELMO stands for everybody let's move on. So if we get to a, a time where we're maybe getting into an argument, I don't think that will happen in this session, or um, somebody's going on too long or there's a topic that's happening that we could table to go to a different um, uh, meeting or it doesn't really fit into this meeting or you know all the things that can happen that can make a, a meeting go awry um, I'll just show Elmo like this as a as a gentle reminder that we should um, figure out how to close out that piece of the conversation and move on to the, move on to the next thing is everybody okay with that sure Mari Elmo says it's okay okay <laughs> so I'm going to just um uh, turn off my screen sharing because we don't need that anymore and now we can see everybody I can see everybody in the room hello everybody hi Nicole hi Doug hi Michael hi Megan hi Peter hi Simon hi Nabil hi David hi Andrew all right so hello everybody uh, what I uh, the way that we want to uh, the way that I'm kind of envisioning this to go I pur pur purposefully didn't set a specific agenda because I really want this to be a conversation so feel free to keep your mics on or off but I'm glad we can see each other's faces because I really feel like we're in the same room together so one of the things oh I'm going to add one more poll here I, 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 I'm doing it we're doing experiments with polls and so I'm going to add another poll here before we totally get in so we can get a sense of how where people are coming from in the room and I just realized as the moderator, I don't get to vote. So I'm going to tell you that I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an investor. I'm a business person. I'm sometimes a student. That's where I fall into. I'm going to add other. I'm an ecosystem. I'm part of the ecosystem building a side. I'm trying to always balance both sides, entrepreneurship and investment. All right. So this is this is who's in the room today. It's quite an even split, isn't it? Interesting. All right, so I'm going to go just around the room um, based on who's in what direction on my screen. And the first person on my screen is David. And um, I'll just give instructions for everybody um, while David's getting his audio set up. And 
the, the, mo the thing that I'm interested in is three things in this first part of the conversation. My questions are, what's your superpower? What do you offer into the ecosystem? And the ecosystem in this definition is the strongly sustainable business model group. And if you have an ask or a need, what that is from the, from the ecosystem. Okay, uh, well, uh, hello everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Um, uh, I'm, um, I am a very uh, new to this, um, new to the group and um, the, the whole idea of sustainable uh, business uh, management. Um, I've just uh, recently been made redundant from a, a consulting company and um, I'm um, wanting to uh, set up as an independent consultant to help particularly SME businesses uh, to um, become sustainable and to understand what sustainability means, that it's more than just saving the planet, it's actually making sure that their businesses um, are good for the future, you know, fit, fit for the future and um, are, are truly sustainable, you know, economically as well as, um, you know, towards the society and, and the planet and the environment. Um, what am I getting out of the group? Well, um, I suppose it's really just to uh, to learn and uh, to understand what uh, the current issues are, uh, uh, what you know, uh, new new thinking there might be around, um, and really sort of the practical application. Um, because as I said, I am a project manager, very much regard myself as a person um, who gets things going and and gets things started. So um, yes, I, I'm I'm here for practical tips and um, uh, yeah um, uh, and information and do you have an ask at this point or something that you need or even if it's not from this ecosystem what you need in general and maybe someone in the ecosystem will know about it and we won't go into the answers to that but we just want to keep track of them well I, I suppose um, uh, having said I'm sort of setting myself up as a as, a, as an independent consultant um, I suppose it's uh, my ask is uh, perhaps uh, for a reality check, um, and that is uh, in the um, SME, the small and medium-sized enterprises. Um, is there a acknowledgement that um, those businesses need to be sustainable, and and if there is, um, is there a need for? people to come alongside the owners um, or the executives to actually guide them and uh, show them what needs to be done and, and help them on their way, really. Thank you, David. Andrew, you're next. And then after Andrew will be Douglas. Hi there. Uh, I'm Andrew Simpson, uh, Ecotone Software Consulting. I'm based in Toronto. Uh, I think my superpower would be around um, the fact that I'm been a business analyst for a long, long time. I think I'm I'm pretty good at that, um, and I think it's something that I can bring to the community. Um, in terms of offering, it would probably dovetail with my company's um, value proposition is around um, sustainability reporting, and specifically around automating that. So again, tying back to the um, the um, the skill around um, being a business analyst, that's kind of what I, what I do. And I think I have something to offer there. And in terms of needs, always looking to um, crack into new, uh, basically the corporate world. Um, and I really want to targeting um, real estate companies. So if anybody knows any folks in that business, um, I'd really like to chat with them. All right. Um, Douglas, and then Nabil. Hi, uh, this is Doug Wirtz uh, in Toronto, and I've been involved with the SSBMG since uh, 2013 and uh, became a first explorer in 2014. But my um, entry into the, into the group was um, uh, not through business, uh, because I have a 40 plus year uh, career in the museum world. And uh, what attracted me to it, though, was um, um, a really a belief that it's cultural values that are the underpinning parts of the uh, uh, dysfunction in our economic system, both at the business level and at the macroeconomic level. And uh, 
and I always imagined the possibility of um, of uh, museums and and other cultural organizations retooling to become real catalysts of cultural change and adaptation. And so um, I'm largely retired at this point, um, but I still stay fairly active, doing some teaching online and and. Uh, um, involved in a, a bunch of voluntary um, activities, particularly with uh, museum associations in the US and in, uh, and in Canada, trying to get them to think differently. Um, so if I have something unique to, to offer is, uh, I come in from a non-traditional perspective, I think, um, and I see the connections very much um, needing to be addressed at, on, on all those levels, but at the, the very foundation, I think are the cultural foundation blocks and pillars that need to change. And, um, and uh, so I've continued to, uh, to develop my own tools um, to try and help uh, museums think differently. Uh, and I run into a huge amount of conservatism in that field of culture and heritage, um, which uh, I think really is, is suffers at the hands of the corporatization and institutionalization of this thing called culture, which is then stuffed into the leisure time uh, economy. Um, but the need for experimentation is vast. So I was really thrilled to see the uh, shift from the um, uh, business focus in the SSBMG to um, uh, flourishing enterprises. And, uh, and so I do think that massive transformation needs to take place and uh, there needs to be real connections across all of those, all of those connectors. So for anybody who has um, interest in, in that kind of systems uh, dynamics, then yeah, I'd love to, to chat about these kinds of things. Doug, did you have any um, needs or do you think the industry has any needs that you want to mention at this point or wants? Well, um, I mean, part of the, the challenge is that it depends on what's meant by the industry or the needs. But um, uh, when I'm dealing with museums and cultural sector, the, the problem associated with not-for-profits that have been incorporated around a bunch of tasks as opposed to impacts um, in the living culture is... Uh, it is a huge, huge obstacle. And I think it, it all stems from how corporate uh, frameworks have um, put straight jackets on these organizations and have given them a very hard time trying to bust out to, to try and have meaningful impacts across a wide range of um, uh, domains, um, societal and, and... Well, today, um... Today, I think all the conversations are going to be from around our own perspectives because mm -hmm. this is a big topic. It's a big community, and we really—I yeah. I can only come up come to it from what I know or my experience or what I'm learning. And so, um, there's no, gonna, not going to be any right or wrong answers. So, just if anyone started late, the um, topics that we're what we're discussing right now is just sort of introductory. What's your superpower? Um, what is it that you um, are need or are getting from the, uh, what is it that you're offering into the ecosystem? And the ecosystem definition is the strongly sustainable business model group, not the whole sustainable um, global things that are happening. And then if you have an ask or a need that you want to ask of the group or put out into the universe so that uh, other people know that, that you're seeking some of these things. So Nabil, if you want to go ahead. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Nabil Harfush. I'm uh one of the co-founders of SSBMG. Uh, originally, I think, I don't know how many years back it was. Uh, and uh, currently I'm uh, affiliated with both uh, OCAD uh, University and, and Harvard, uh, where I teach at the engineering school. And I've had uh, interest uh, for the longest time, like many, many of you, on uh, you know, how this transformation is going to be, and particularly in the SME sector. Uh, so I have um, a, a lab at uh, OCAD that's called the uh, Resilience Design Lab. And over the years, we have been conducting some research on various aspects related to SMEs, uh, starting from what is the mindset of leaders uh, of different type in the SMEs that could, uh, you know, help or, or uh, slow down a transformation um, going to other uh, uh, 
uh, areas, including, for example, new corporate forms, uh, of, uh, uh, such as the for benefit corporation, and what it uh, needs, what do we need to do in order to introduce it at a large scale in Canada, the federal level and at uh, provincial levels. Uh, we had had some success uh, there is uh, in, in British Columbia. Uh, where we, there, there is now a law that, that has created this category of um, corporations, but the law itself is not sufficient. Uh, it's necessary, but not sufficient. We need to make people understand what are the advantages of this and how easy or difficult is the conversion from other types of uh, corporations, whether profit or not profit, to this new type of corporations. Um, so, um, I would say what I can bring to the group is really um, a bit of foresight. Uh, I, you know, I, we are part, uh, both myself and, and uh, my colleague Peter Jones, who is on the call. Um, and uh, we, this is a program that one of the three programs in North America about strategic foresight. And this is an approach to anticipate things, uh, not to forecast, but to think about possibilities of the future and try to uh, uh, determine what are the changes in today's planning that, that could help best. Um, so um, what I would like to see from this um, uh, community is, uh, I don't know why this phone is starting to talk to me suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask it to do anything. Um, uh, my ask uh, and my hope was today to, uh, over so many years now, as you said, uh, Laurie, about the uh, 94th meeting, uh, we covered a lot of ground. We uh, spun off a number of interesting organizations. Uh, Bob Willard was originally part of, of our uh, team and then became uh, one of the co-founders of uh, uh, Future Fit Business uh, Benchmark. Um, and, and there are a number of, of other projects that have been, uh, you know, uh, initiated out of this. And this is how we'd like to see it. Like, you know, it, we have to gain scale and achieve something on the ground, not just theoretically. And, and so I was hoping that this meeting um, would uh, be an opportunity to evaluate what have we achieved. Let's, let's actually list all our achievements and, you know, what, what we did right and, and so on. Uh, and then what are some of the weaknesses or, or things we haven't achieved that, that we need to speak frankly about? And, and I think when we have those two buckets, it might be a bit easier to talk about where should we go from here. So, thank you. Excellent, awesome. I was hoping some of those things would come out. So Simon and then Robin, uh, sorry, Simon and then Nicole. Hi, thanks. Um, I think I know pretty, uh, most people here. I'm the, in terms of what I do, I'm the CEO worldwide of Holonomics, um, a business consultancy. And for us, we're very much about um, transformation that matters. I'm not really going to talk too much more about our company. I'll leave the URL so people can take a look at our website um, after this meeting. So I want to focus on one or two different things. So there's um, our website. You'll find out much more information about, about us and how we work. And also, um, I'm the co-author of two books, Holonomics, Business Where People and Planet Matter, and Customer Experiences with Soul in Year in Design. And I think just in terms of this particular introduction, um, the other significant thing, probably the most significant project that I've been working on this year is the launch of the Deep Tech Network. Um, a deep tech ecosystem based in Sao Paulo. And we've been doing some really interesting projects, many of which have a very strong social impact um, dimension. So for example, when COVID struck, um, a certain number of major health companies were actually struggling to implement applications, working with some of the largest um, well-known business consultancies through our ecosystem, we worked in a very agile manner, manner to implement a number of telemedicine apps, not just to benefit patients, but obviously to protect doctors, senior doctors and surgeons who are maybe above the age of 50 
and who are in um, the at-risk age group. So we've done that. We're working on projects to globally improve, sorry, um, nationally improve education um, in Brazil through um, a very innovative platform design. And just in terms of how our ecosystem works, we have four key dimensions. So we're not just about implementing technology solutions. Um, we have this deep tech aspect, but in terms of my superpower, I also describe our deep tech ecosystem as having um, or contributing to deep thinking. It has this dimension of deep thinking. And so this is what Holonomics, our consultancy, brings to the ecosystem, this deep thinking. We're also developing new collaborative platforms. Um, and so deep collaboration is a key um, dimension of our ecosystem and also deep talent. Now, while the world is obviously experiencing great inequality in the wealth and concentration of power of technology companies, um, there's also a skills gap. Um, companies are looking for skilled people to work in the areas of technology. And one of our initiatives is a not-for-profit initiative, training um, young people from some of the most dangerous and disadvantaged uh, favelas or shanty towns in Rio de Janeiro. We're training them, giving them IT skills. And these um, youngsters are finding employment, but we're also helping them to take part in sponsored social impact programs. And I thought I might just show one program, which is one of the things we've delivered from our deep tech network um, ecosystem. So I'm going to, hopefully this will work. I'll just share my screen. So what you're about to see is a new platform. Uh, one of the big problems in Brazil is that there are many, many social entrepreneurs and philanthropists who want to donate very substantial resources to help disadvantaged people in Brazil. But of course, one of the great problems is tracking and really knowing where these resources have been deployed, how successful they've been, and which areas may not be receiving aid that could be receiving aid. So hopefully what you're seeing is um, partially a map of Rio de Janeiro and we're able to use blockchain technology to be able to provide the social entrepreneurs and philanthropists with the confidence to invest in social projects because we're now able to track where their donations are going and who's received them. So this is an interactive map and you can zoom in and you can receive very, you know, there's an actual wealth of statistics and information based on the platform that our deep tech ecosystem has developed. So initially, this, um, the first application of the platform was to help track food donations. So when um, COVID first struck in Brazil, it impacted on many, many families and many people donated resources to be able to get food to some very, very vulnerable families, very vulnerable communities. But then the problem was, despite the, the millions and millions of aid, people didn't really quite know where the money was being distributed. So we've created this platform. And now that we've, um, we're able to track food donations, the next application is likely to be sanitation. So again, um, again, I don't want to dwell on the negatives, but obviously, you know, Brazil is a country full of inequality, full of very major challenges but we're using technology to really help uh, direct resources and help, as I say, help some of the wealthiest families, the wealthiest institutions in Brazil really have a much greater impact and monitor what they're doing and really make sure, you know, that they can have confidence in the projects to which they're donating and um, really trying to have an impact. So uh, as I say, sanitation is probably going to be the next big goal after making sure um, that you know, we've, we're able to um, provide you know, significant food distribution channels you know, to the people that really need it. Simon, so that's just, oh. so do you have some uh, uh, ask or a need that uh, from yeah. the really yeah, for just the close that stop the show. So yeah, I, I thought that was you know, just um, an interesting application of our particular philosophy to deep text. So 
in terms of um, asking, um, I mentioned this in the previous meeting, we've also been working on a collaborative platform that is very much designed to be um, accessible for um, not-for-profit organizations and for social entrepreneurs in places like India, mm -hmm. places where pe these people don't necessarily have the ability to sign up to the um, license fees for platforms such as Mural and Miro. And also this month, we've actually managed to create a collaborative platform that we believe actually has much more advanced technology than what's currently available. And so one thing I'd like to be able to offer is the ability to locate or you know, implement the Flourishing Canvas on our platform, because we think it has very considerable benefits. And I'd like to be able to set up a meeting to present our platform and explain exactly why we think it's going to be, you know, the next type of, the next generation of collaborative platforms. And also in terms of what we're looking for, it would be great to have say two or three volunteers to, we're going to be making this platform available prior to launch, you know, to get early feedback. And that'll be about December. So anyone who would like to be able to have, you know, work with the flourishing canvas in a different way, in a way in which makes it much more powerful and accessible. It would be great to both offer this uh, to the you know, strongly sustainable business model group and also you know, receive comments as well and look at you know, how we can continue to improve you know, based on the version 2.0 developments that have already been happening. Very interesting. Uh, when we get later into the discussion, I have a lot of questions and thoughts on some of the things that you talked about. So thank you, Simon, Nicole, and then Michael. Hello, uh, my name is Nicole. Um, I'm actually a graduate of the Strongly, Strongly Sustainable Business Model Program. I'm actually a graduate of the OCAD uh, SFI program. Uh, Peter Jones was my primary advisor. Um, in my day job, I actually work at Georgian College. So it's a college north, about an hour north of Toronto. Um, and I there am the manager of the Center for Change Making and Social Innovation. Uh, we are an Ashoka uh, campus, so we're accredited by Ashoka, uh, the global organization that goes around the world and supports um, fellows and campuses that are sort of working in this space. Um, but uh, I guess, why am I here? Well, I used to sit in the role of um, uh, the animator's position. So I uh, worked with Anthony for a year. I put my hand up and said, I'd like to learn more about the flourishing community. Uh, to the point that I ended up working with Peter <laughs> and um, working on the re-envisioning of the canvas. So my, I guess, I guess my superpower would be is I'm a reform designer. <laughs> uh, so I spent 20 years in the corporate world in product development, industrial design, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, left that and pursued now where I am in academia at, at an innovation center. And in the, uh, the strategic foresight and innovation program got really interested in these tools that we use. Uh, to design with. So, you know, our visual modeling tools, the canvas, um, anything to do with tools and collaboration tools, anything like that. So got really fascinated with these tools that we use to design with, particularly in the systemic community, like how are these tools creating the verbs, all this kind of stuff. So um, had this wonderful opportunity to work with Peter and Anthony, and they were gracious enough to let me uh, tackle the canvas. Uh, so we did do a workshop a few weeks ago and just at RSD, I think Peter mentioned it, we just uh, sort of did the first, our first sort of workshop. I worked with um, uh, Francesca, who's a first explorer at Ghent University in Belgium. And I worked with Maya, who's a first explorer uh, at Halmstad University, and then myself at Georgian, who's also a first explorer. Um, and we sort of went through this iterative design process and we looked at um, how might we re-envision the canvas from this idea that different people have different ways of collaborating uh completely upended the concept um created these little hex cards uh sort of looked at the canvas in different ways sort of looked at it from um, um an accessibility perspective from some user experience design yeah and sort of had this opportunity to really um explore the canvas uh, from its uh, design language. Sorry, there's people going on in my household in the background. It's dinner time. <laughs> so, um, anyways, and yeah, so just really an opportunity to look at different ways that people use and look and work with the canvas. So different logic models, different modes of modeling, 
Um, yeah, and so we presented that and I guess my superpower is I am very fascinated with those tools and am willing to work with anybody that wants to explore um, different ways of using the canvas, working with the canvas from an interaction perspective, not only from facilitation, but also to the design of it. So yeah, really kind of nerding out in that area, not really on the, you know, sort of in the, the massive philosophical area, which is amazing and really love to plug into that. But yeah, I'm more interested in how do we translate those ideas into accessible, you know, making it accessible so that people who maybe are working in rural social enterprise um, can pick up this tool or pick up these concepts and work with them, uh, work with municipalities and, you know, sort of in that way. So completely nerding out on the tool side of it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's me. And so at Georgian, we're always looking for people that want to test the tool <laughs> and continue to work at it from a first explorer uh, point. And yeah, that's pretty much that's it in a nutshell. One of your asks or need is people to help test the tool. Do you have any other asks? Um, anybody who's interested in doing research. I mean, I, I am at an academic institution. So if you do have, um, if you would like to do some work with flourishing and sort of a rural uh, non-urban context, um, Georgian has seven campuses spread across central Ontario. Uh, so we do do a lot of work uh, in our center. We actually have um, a social enterprise initiative, uh, which is quite deep in the community doing some really kick-ass work. And, Mich and Megan will know a little bit about that because she's worked with us on that. Um, yeah, so uh, digging into social procurement, uh, all kinds of stuff. So there's some really cool stuff happening in our region from a Canadian context. So if you are looking to uh, reach out and you want some guinea pigs or you want some, I don't know if that's the right word, but if you want some access to a database in a community or an entry point, uh, we are happy to broker and facilitate those conversations uh, through research. Perfect, thanks, Nicole. Uh, Michael and then Megan. So the questions are again, what's your superpower? What are you offering into the ecosystem? Definition of the ecosystem as the strongest sustainable business model group. And what is your ask? From your perspective, so there's no wrong answers. No, no. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Michael, and I, of course, call my cat in future. So, of course, I have superpowers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my, my superpowers in that, I would say I have a very easy way to get, get into flow states. I'm very, very interested in what kinds of flow states and how you, how you go into them and how you become productive in them and, and stuff like that. And I'm also extremely curious and can have a, a high cognitive presence, especially new during the Zoom era, Zoom era of COVID. So I've been sitting in Zoom calls around the clock for half a year now, just listening and taking in and talking, and I never get tired of that. So, so that's also a superpower. And um, I'm, I'm in Halmstad, uh, Sweden. So I met Anthony when I was here to, to Sweden. So that, this is my home. I, li I li lived uh, in another city then, but now I live in Halmstad. Um, and uh, I'm interested in all things, very, very interested in lifelong learning and the, the process of actually facilitating your own life. And I've been working with many people with that, and including myself, and developed a model I called Ikigai 4.0, where I help people uh, uh, facilitate and narrate their own journey for life of lifelong learning, uh, everything from networking, friends, skills, passions, uh, hobbies, and stuff like that. So. Uh, I'm also very in interested in all, all, all things, uh, how we design our society and how we play, play society together. So that this is also things I'm very, very interested in. And uh, I, I try to contribute uh, uh, oh, as much as I can. I'm, a, uh, I'm an avid networker and I love traveling, but that doesn't happen now. So now I network a lot through Zoom. I'm also, uh, uh, the thing I found this summer is a network called the STOA that is based out of uh, Toronto, Peter Lindbergh. Actually, Peter Jones, you were at his call, I guess, uh, last week. Uh, so I'm, I'm hanging on the STOA every day as well. For they, have, they have a lot of cool events. I'll share the link in the chat uh, briefly here if you need this instrument. That's what I call a wisdom gym. So I'm really interested now. How, how do we actually train ourselves to become wiser? In a world well where everyone <laughs> seems not not getting there, uh, especially you know not 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 small select circles and bubbles like us, but uh, on a larger scale there there seems to be a lack of wisdom everywhere in society. So how do we actually start training ourselves in wisdom? And that's something um, I'm in contact with Thomas Björkman here in Sweden as well, who explored this as well. How do you 
how do you do this on a, on a, on a larger, larger scale in society? So. And did you um, ask Michael? Yeah, ask is like, uh, I, I, I'm looking for opportunities now of, to explore this further. How, how do we play society together? We have a project, me and my colleague Bartola, we, that we call Impact Playground that we run under a flag called Learning Society that is connected to Trondheim and their work uh, for how to actually create a learning society. So that's an interesting project. I mean, we experiment with the online uh, digital playgrounds all summer and see how, how we can get people together in an event that is like the opposite of a hackathon. So I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to run digital playgrounds with some of you. If you're interested in having an event or something like that, we want to run a playground online with you. So. Perfect. Uh, Megan. Hi, uh, my name is Megan. I've been with um, Flourishing Enterprise Canvas uh, since 2000. 16 or 17 or something like that. Uh, I was first explorer then through Pillar Nonprofit Network in London. Um, I'm self-employed. I run a consultants, co consulting firm that does project management. So I am a pro classic traditional waterfall project manager moving into the agile world and uh, super practical. So not this big philosophical thing that I hear, but I am like very practical. Um, <laughs> And uh, I kind of have a personal mission to try and move a lot of nonprofits to an agile framework uh, away from this task based. Somebody mentioned it, Douglas, maybe about being task based instead of mission based. And so I have a crusade that I'm on to convert people um, and uh, convince them waterfall is dead. Our old way of doing things, which is list out our milestones chart today for five years in the future, does not help us achieve mission-based outcomes or impacts when we're doing work. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, I work with mostly social enterprises uh, on the for-profit side, a few on the non-profit side, but particularly the for-profit world. I uh, use the canvas exclusively with them as a tool, um, really specific tool to, um, I guess, and help in terms of planning and solidifying their mission. Um, I don't know if I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, my offer is I'm happy to share um, how I use the tool. I think I use it differently than, um, I guess if there is a standard way, I think I use it differently than that. Um, happy to be a guinea pig, Nicole, anytime. I loved the new canvas when I saw it last year. Yes, you can guinea pig me anytime. Uh, and, uh, if I hadn't asked, it'd be, I'd just love to talk to anybody that does work with nonprofits or social enterprises who are in the agile world, who are using Scrum, Kanban, you know, any of those weird terms, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. It's, uh, but aren't using the traditional ways of getting stuff done. I would really love to talk to organizations who do that now. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Uh, next is uh, Peter and last but not least at this point, Josh. Okay, thanks. Hi, it's uh, good to join everybody. I think my superpower is involved in um, the integration of emerging knowledge into the formation of disciplines. I've been involved. Um, I've just found myself at the um, in you know the formation of human factors, at least in human computer interaction. At the time that the HCI conferences started and worked in that field, in the application of of, of expert systems into uh, emerging. Uh, emerging platforms in the early 90s um, in, in, in windowing and networking systems at the same time, systems engineering, and then systemic design and working like with Nabil and with other professors and strategic foresight and innovation. Some of these are disciplines like systemic design has emerged as a discipline. If you work in service design, systemic design, the development of, of um, methodologies primarily so I can consider a lot of the work that that I do and my work with with Anthony and and, and this community has been uh, from the very beginning in um, in collaborating with uh, with Anthony and, and others in the formation of the tool sets that we're using so uh, working with Nicole and before that the um, the other design team and in integrating Anthony's work from ecological economics into the, the canvases and the ways that we're using them. So kind of a behind the scenes designer there, but I do a lot of this kind of work with training 
train our students in strategic foresight and innovation, synthesis mapping, um, systemic design tools, working with, I could put some of these URLs in, in the chat as well if you're interested in, and learning about the systemic design toolkit, synthesis mapping, and the development of, 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 of these, uh, development of these tools in the, in the community that is, has been forming around um, systemic design applications and scholarship in the RSD symposium, which is being held this week. It's kind of a big deal this week. We had over 400 participants. We've never been able to have more than 300 in a live conference. And now that we've been, oh, we've opened it up and we can also brought the ticket price down to probably less than, I'd wager any, work, any conference you've participated in ever, it's for professionals, $85, I'm serious, US, because it's being held in India for one thing, but also with a lot of volunteers for students, $50, and that is a, over a week plus workshops. We had Vandana Shiva as a keynote. So I can tell I'm kind of proud of that this has gone really well and it's continuing to develop. So where I see, you know, I, I've done other co-founding, so you can see kind of where I'm coming from as a, as a scholar, professor, or, and, uh, and as an innovator in my own practice. Um, I'm interested in, in developing kind of the state of the art toolkits and methodologies can be applied in, in um, complex systemic and design contexts that range from service design in, in healthcare and client, in, in client design projects, which I still do mostly with the US, in organizational settings, primarily in professional practices, a lot of work in healthcare, healthcare systems, um, uh, in, um, in um, development of knowledge toolkits. So probably interested, have, have a lot in common with, you know, with, with those of us, with those of you who are working in uh, large scale software applications. I mean, I don't do those so often um, because they take a lot of dedicated time, but it's, it's an area that, that I still, that I'm still developing um, tools for the integration for that, those types of, of um, knowledge systems and um, and online platforms. Um, what I'm looking for in this community and for further participation is probably mostly my role in in uh, with Randy Saad, um, Manuel Reamer, and Anthony, but in the Flourishing Enterprise Institute and developing, I guess, the first node that will uh, that will become. Um, an, an exemplar for the other, uh, you know, for the, for the network within the FEI, the Flourishing Enterprise Institute, working with other knowledge creation um, uh, communities and labs around the world that are doing work in in um, business strong sustainability, ecological economics applied to um, uh, enterprise level and planning and urban. Um, urban context as well. We're doing more and more community planning, community energy and, and climate change and, and strategic planning where these, where foresight systems and, and the flourishing toolkit uh, or canvas, canvases are being used. And so we're, uh, with the FEI, we're, you know, I'm seeing the opportunity to move the SSBMG into uh, it, into the into the the larger scale enterprise context, it's been very focused around the you know the or at least it's named and a lot of it's still named SSBMG. It still comes from the history of working with um, the the development of um, you know uh, the business model context, which is still incredibly important in the MISO system in the application of. Of, of, of all of our skills at the enterprise level. There's so much more that we've learned and that we can, can and that we're bringing into these conversations um, month to month, you know, over the years. So I think it's, it's time for us to, uh, to really get a grasp on what, uh, you know, wh what, our, what our future direction might be. Um, I've talked to Anthony a lot about this and it's also, because we have this continuity with SSBMG, it's hard to just kind of, this is what we're doing today, I guess, too, is have, just having a conversation where we can, 
um, uh, get a sense and a pulse of where we're going and, and how we might frame the community formed uh, around strong and sustainable business models into the, into the larger scope of, of engagement that we're all working with and how we can support um, support this. I mean, I, I think that this is really framed more around flourishing enterprises like the FEI is named and a lot of our, that scope seems to fit well, but we're also, we know that there's some ownership of the community and we all own parts of this. And so, you know, I'm, I'm glad we're having this discussion to see, you know, how we might, you know, this, what I would be asking of, of, of all of us and for us to consider. And that's what I think it will help create the viability and continuity of, of this community. So I think that covers a few things, so thanks. Okay, I think I'm up. Um, so my name is Josh Harewer, uh, located in Toronto. Um, my superpower, um, I am reaching back um, to a review I got um, from a photo show I participated in that I really liked. It, I was call, uh, said that I did compassionate photography. And so um, I think that speaks to having um, emotional insight and um, yeah, I do get called up by friends for uh, coaching, um, personal coaching. Um, my offer to the ecosystem, um, I'm really pretty nascent in my career, um, despite having no hair. Um, I've... Um, finished an MBA a couple of years ago and um, uh, recently landed a contract with the Toronto Business Development Center. And um, yeah, so right now I'm, I'm mostly like uh, processing um, startup applicants uh, through a, a pipeline for their um, startup visa program. Uh, for international applicants. See a knowing nod there. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so I, I, I really enjoy uh, the discussions that um, have been going on here and in, you know, I, I enjoyed lots about the MBA program and, and enjoy uh, Systems Thinking Ontario and um, uh, recently went to um, a program by Systems Thinking Toronto, also um, enjoyable. Um, yeah, um, my ask is about, um, I, was, I was kind of excited when, when this thought popped in my head, but career, career advice, career mentorship, um, I'm not sure if that's too broad, but um, that would be uh, helpful. Uh, yeah, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Josh. I really, uh, I really appreciate everyone's stories. I'm going to just add a little bit of my own two cents on there because, as a member of the collective, um, um, I have my own things that I'm bringing to the table. So, um, I'm a connector and a collaborator, and um, I was born with a. Social, social justice vein like this wide and uh, um, have always stro uh, been sort of the weirdo that's trying to bring uh, bring this uh, way of thinking or the, 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 the types of um, empathy and um, collective collaboration uh, into everyday life. And so when I was ran, into, ran across this group, I was actually looking for a photo to put in some sort of other thing that I was doing. And I ran across this picture of the canvas and I'm like, what's this? And that's how I got involved in the group. And I think that was in 2018, maybe early 2018. I can't remember exactly, but um, so as a connector and a collaborator and um, uh, involved in many different kinds of groups, I work in five pillars. 
community development, arts, disability, education, entrepreneurship, and technology. And I'm always trying to figure out how do those go together? How does technology and innovation and, and community and, and what's the overlapping pieces and what can they learn from each other in terms of how uh, uh, the people and the organizations that are, are siloing themselves into these sort of spaces um, are, are finding innovation, innovative ideas coming just from a different perspective. So if I'm in a uh, on a board or on, in an organization and I'm bringing ideas from the tech sector and, and that way of thinking, it's like blows people's minds uh, and it doesn't need to. It's only a slight pivot of perspective for the most part. And so uh, I work and uh, I'm an entrepreneur uh, involved in many business and partnerships and partnerships and collaboration is really important to me, but I think that we, maybe even in this group in general in society are not very good at collaboration. I think of the sandbox when you see two little two-year-olds playing together and side by side people think they're playing together but they're really playing in parallel and I think people call that collaboration in the business world and in the not-for-profit world and in life even marriages but some there's some marriages like that as well and so how, how how do we sort of use this type of community in the way that the discussions happen through the you know, the business model canvas or, or 3.0 or future fit or any of the other tools that are out there. I'm always trying to stack tools and curate tools. Um, how do we use those things to help that help people answer those questions for themselves and for their businesses. And so that's kind of where I come in. Now I'm going to sort of segue into we have a little less than a half an hour or 20 minutes ish uh, to, to sort of sort of go through some maybe ideas and questions is uh, as I joined this group, uh, so I ran across it, I spent a long time trying to track down where this came from, I emailed and connected into the ecosystem, uh, but it was very difficult. I it was very difficult to engage, it was very difficult to get connected, and um, so my superpower is connecting and collaborating, and I was having a big challenge getting connected. Um, my offer into the ecosystem is really a, a body uh, to, to help i'm uh i'm uh, i'm in service to the group and as much as much as i can do and that's just not as a community activator i am a community activator because that's what i offer into the ecosystem um and then my ask which is also part of the segue from what i was just talking about is um being able to use the canvas so when i joined and maybe how this happened to everybody else there was a tidal wave tsunami of information that was um, offered to me as the um, introduction to the canvas and to the group and I now I you know I sit on uh, the I, I sit on some of the management stuff for the um, flourishing enterprise Institute as well because I'd like to be able to help find funding and help you know the participation of the how these groups work together so my my ask of the group is um, the ability to sit in or witness or view or participate in somebody else using the canvas. I'm isolated um, here in Calgary. We have a strong activist group. We have a, we have a, a small community, I think five people that are part of this uh, the strong stimulus business model group, but they're not active and or engaged. And so I'm trying to engage people here, but I'm, I'm finding with all the information uh, that I was given that I can't actually find, figure out on my own by myself it, how to use the, the canvas or the tools. And um, I heard somewhere that there's some questions that people stack to run the canvas, but I've never seen them. So I, I'm, I'm at, a bit, at a disadvantage, in my opinion, at a disadvantage. I might be at the same advantage as everybody else. So um, with the last, say, sort of 20 minutes that we have here with this robust um, um, I will uh, also create a bit of a, a chart uh, to send out to everybody so everyone can see what everybody's up to. And a lot of you know each other, so maybe you already know what everyone's up to, but for me, this is highly valuable because, uh, like I say, in Calgary, Alberta, Alberta is not the most progress, uh, liberal thinking, you know, progressive innovation province. And so to me, it's a treat to always sit in on these conversations and hear what other people are doing. Uh, I'm personally connected globally in all sorts of different projects related to sustainability, social impact, reporting, um, B Corp uh, strategies, those types of things. 
but it's me by myself for the most part in my very small community that's very we're having a very difficult time activating so in the last bit here if, if, is there anyone that wanted to add anything that they thought oh i missed something important i saw somebody put up that they're a b corp in the chat any final thoughts that anyone want to add i actually wanted to make just a quick comment on what you said about calgary and so on so in the early uh, stages of uh, developing uh, the uh, flourishing what what we know today as the flourishing business canvas we had maybe three months of discussions whether this tool should have a um, a worldview or not right ideological stand or not and uh, for many good reasons we decided it should be neutral it should not have a worldview because you know we wanted to convert those that don't know yet right <laughs> and so even a company uh, or an enterprise that that says my purpose is just to make profit can actually use this tool right because it eliminates opportunities and risks that are not uh, visible to them otherwise and and by just eliminating that it it guides them to certain actions right so, so I wanted just to to add that to, you know, be, particularly if you are in Calgary. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so um, that's a key point, yeah, Nabil. I think we forget to recognize that. Um, I mean, in in a sense, there's no real neutrality, but we've done a good job of of presenting, you know, the tools in ways that they could be adopted by any type of enterprise and we believe that just by asking the questions that are embedded into uh, you know into 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 the boxes and the perspectives that they will learn and we don't need to convert them that they will come along just to the any type of disciplined use of the tools mm -hmm. yeah so my goal my goal as an animator is really based on my experience and so that's uh, i want to figure out how to make the, uh, the entering into the Strong Sustainable Business Model Group, potentially the Flourishing Enterprise Institute, um, hel helping people figure out where they plug in and then helping them get the information they need from that perspective. And then they can come in and, and, and go into that neutrality. But people are coming from where they're coming from and how do we help them um, activate, I guess, because I, we have, what, almost 2,000 people in our LinkedIn group and uh, it's, that's a that's a network that we're not um, utilizing uh, in any significant way. So, um, within our last 15 minutes or so here, um, we're not going to maybe get into a huge discussion uh, on what the to the topics that came out. Um, but I think what I if 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 everyone agrees, um, I would like to uh, maybe use this time to um, submit questions or thoughts or pathways to um, maybe um, uh, um, questions into questions for the whole network. So for example, um, one of the questions that are, we had three questions that already came out, evaluating what, we've, what, what, we've, what we have achieved and what are some of the weakness that we have um, not achieved and our future direction. So if we were going to, Tim and I, and any member of the network going to go forth and talk to uh, members of the network, what, what, are, what are the things that this group in particular that we're talking to right now, what are some of the opinions on what, um, how we should be framing these conversations? What are some of the themes that we maybe, you, you, you're, you might be aware of some of the themes that are out there. I'm not fully aware of the themes that are part of this group. And um, then maybe some of the things that of how ideas on how we can activate those first people when they make their first connection. So that's a lot, but just any thoughts? We have about 15 minutes. Maybe I'll take a stab at it, just to start the discussion. Uh, I've been part of the development of the Osterwalder of, uh, business model canvas. Uh, and I know Alex Osterwalder very well and and so i've been uh, private to seeing the development or evolution of how it started from uh, an idea a small tool then spread to certain organization and then became this major thing that that was uh, done and one of the things that when i compare 
the flourishing business canvas to the BMC is that they have a much cleaner information architecture in how they present their stuff. We have our stuff all over the place. You know, every slide we have is, is you know, filled to the brim with stuff. So that's contrary to design principle that are taught I look at, you know? And so uh, I think it's time, first of all, to streamline that. If we think about the user, we need to think not, hey, I want to present this and this and, you know, and, and, and publish and do this. I want, first of all, to make it easy for a new user to find the proper information. And then slowly we can, we can increase how, you know, the level of engagement with those. Uh, the second thing I say, uh, I, I would uh, uh, submit is that with the uh, large uh, population we have in the LinkedIn group, for example, what I observed is that actually there are interesting conversation organically, bilaterally, trilaterally happening there and so on. But uh, nobody is actually um, harvesting those. Nobody is taking a look and then every now and then said, look, this is what's emerging here. This is an interesting conversation and there are some um, intersections between this and this conversation, right? Which is, you know, which would help people to find even more value. The reason people are still coming to this group because they are finding a lot of resources, a lot of people, a lot of connection discussions, but you know, we're not leveraging the, 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 the you know, the, the wealth of information that is happening from the different participants for the other participants, right? So I'll stop right here. Yeah, so we've talked, Tim and I have been talking about this for at least a year. Um, now we just need to activate it. <laughs> so thank you. I've written it down and put two stars beside it. <laughs> Nicole, um, I have a question, um, or anybody, but Nicole specifically, because um, I'm uh, also doing some urban rural connections around uh, entrepreneurship. And in terms of sort of ecosystem development and uh, um, how we can be engaging people, are you finding that urban rural disconnection or connection is something that um, this group can help with? And what might that look like? Um, that's interesting. So I think, I, I think, I don't necessarily think it's so much as a disconnection. I think it's more of who decides the priority of the narrative. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is when I think about our urban or non urban communities or our rural communities, um, I think that they have, you know, there's a lot of complexities with the lack of density that happens with how funding structures and how policies made and sort of how the neoliberalist agenda sort of crushes into sort of these these communities and you know Megan you can jump in and divert me on any of this since you since you deal a lot in this space too so you're welcome to kind of like jump in there but um I don't think it's so much as a disconnection as I think it's sort of a conversation with policymakers to recognize that they don't necessarily have to bring in an urban consultant or like an, ur an urban consultant to comment on rural affairs mm -hmm. I can, statement, but. I can say that I think the thought is that in, in small town and rural areas that big city urban consultants understand how to generate revenue for that small municipality better than a small municipal or like any kind of rural base. And so leaning into unique tools that are focused, that they feel aren't focused on revenue generation tends to alienate them from using it. And so they, you know, they're seeing only the hockey stick, you know, the hockey stick of entrepreneurship here and that they need to have that massive growth rather than being sustainable. It's so complex. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So like and, here, I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my head wants to explode. That's exactly how I feel. Most, I spend <laughs> a lot of time rubbing my temples. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I think, you know, and Peter, your work on the canvas where you started to go into the community canvas, which is, Funny enough, that's, you know, Megan, when we were doing that uh, workshop and where the original sort of expression of, you know, sort of an, an evolution of the simplification of the canvas started actually with Peter's uh, policy canvas, right, where he had added the dimension of community and the accountabilities along the bottom. And so I think you've hit the nail on the head. So I don't know, I'm kind of like jumping all over the place. But yeah, I think that there is a recognition that we can connect 
I mean, the great thing about flourishing is it busts up that narrative um, in a lot of ways from my experience is because you, you allow other contexts to come into the conversation. So I just think you're right. Like municipal, like rural municipalities are getting tools <laughs> from an urban context and they need the, 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 they need the tools developed from the, the, the rural perspective so that mm -hmm. you're right, they will adopt, like, you know, Nabil said, the user right and taking into that consideration so i guess in a short way the disconnect would be yes i think the flourishing allows us to bring in those dimensions that were never had before whether it's urban or rural so anybody can anybody can chime in on that one thank you user experience is critical right i have a comment i was about to post it's uh so my my experience even my own experience when i first looked at the flourishing canvas was no I'm going to do business model canvas. I, this is just way too complex. Then I saw Anthony do a class. It was just like, no, and it was a new job. And um, I think I was willing to be fired over it. <laughs> be truthful. But then I saw Anthony speak and it, he made, he knows it so well that it made sense. And I drank the Kool-Aid. I was, now I have fully drank the Kool-Aid and it's my go-to tool. Um, I don't know how to decomplexify it. That's not a word. I'm making up words now. But I, the first reaction is this is way too hard. And the, the language is too academic. And I'm sorry, I love academics and I love academia. And for us practical non-academics, um, people feel uh, dumb, as I guess is the only word. They feel too stupid to use the canvas. So to bring it down where they don't feel too uh, overwhelmed, I guess. Appreciate that. And because I, 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 I've been striving to, to, to the use of the canvas and not just been, I just haven't been able to figure out how to implement it in a way that people would understand uh, because I don't have any experience. Uh, just, I just got it in a thing and a whole bunch of words and whole 9,000 documents and a Google Drive that's yeah. five gigs. I'll show you my jacked up version anytime. It's not yeah. the same. It'll mess you up forever. <laughs> But I can show you how I use it. Maybe I can say as somebody who's been here from the very beginning that what's holding us, really what's holding us back from making this totally accessible to everybody in the world is the licensing and the business model. I mean, we have to go kind of step by step with this, even the flourishing business. I mean, the, um, as we moved into flourishing and then with the first explorers, I mean, these were kind of big steps. The first explorers is a way of managing the license before we had the right kind of organization to support all this. So unlike Osterwalder, who really set up a company around, around you know, strategizer or that supports everything that came out of the book, you know, we've got more of a cooperative, but we never formed the cooperative, but it is still this cooperative approach, right? So we're in this place where, you know, I've got some ideas, but I can't do this without Anthony and the others. And so we, we've been having some conversations. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's interested in continuing, I know there's some, we talked about this a couple of sessions ago about, we have had, you know, ongoing discussions about how, how to set up a fair licensing approach where we can really develop this. And that way we can all also, those who of us who are investing our time in it can get something back and feel we know that the license is something that's fair and it's going to return some some value and it's going to be then useful and, and understood by everybody so i think we've allowed the complication just because that means that we get like really good people who know what it's about but we don't have so much demand yet that we don't know how to handle it mm. that, that's it's a cop-out i know but we really need to figure this out what um, maybe in the last five minutes, um, maybe if everyone would just be interested in doing a bit of a round table again with uh, uh, an idea that you would like to put forward to the whole community, a question that you would like us to ask the community, or some other something that you'd like us, and I want to say ask, I'm specifically talking about me and Tim as activators, but something that then we can help the whole community implement what those things might be. So if you have uh, uh, an idea that we could implement, a question that you'd like us to ask people or some other thing, and I'll just do a quick round table. Uh, anyone would like to specifically go first, have an idea off the top of their head? I don't want to call on anyone in case, Douglas. 
Yeah, I, um, I do have a, a question whether or not there's an opportunity for us to do something more collaboratively with Kate Rayworth. And I know we tried for some years, I think, to actually build that bridge um, unsuccessfully. But now um, she's created an action lab with Donut Economics and it's, uh, it's rolling out in Amsterdam, Philadelphia and Portland um, as we speak. And I just think that it it makes total sense to be bringing in the more micro level um, ecological economics uh, frameworks um, into that municipal environment. And I just, I don't know whether anyone in our network is actually engaged in that work, but it it just seems like um, we we should be trying to leverage it if we can. Okay, I'll put that on the table. Anybody else? I'll, um, I'll just quickly follow up with Doug. I'll say, yeah, I mean, I'll, my piece, I'll add that, that we are, um, yeah, I'm, in, I'm working with a group called Bounce Beyond, working on identifying next economies around the world that are moving in this direction already. We haven't applied the canvas yet. We're, this group is closely linked with Kate Rayworks' Worth's work. She's just too busy right now to engage. Maybe the lab is, is, is an angle in. And, and if you're interested, we can explore that. David, did you have something? Um, yes, being um, uh, new to this group, the, um, the, uh, the flourishing business canvas is totally new to me. So I, I don't know anything about it, but um, I, I'm just thinking from a, a business point of view that you know, you've got the big massive global corporates and, and then you've got the small, perhaps even one man business um, that uh, is it possible to create a, a canvas light um, so that it would be applicable to a smaller business or a corporate or a, a, you know, a, an urban municipal or, or a, a rural, you know, so that you have perhaps either two, two canvases or, or as you work through the canvas, it's, um, you know, there's certain bits that it says, you know, if, if your turnover is this amount or, if you're doing this particular activity, don't do this section, jump to the next next part. Andrew? Yeah, um, I'm working with a group of uh, farmers market vendors here in Toronto to basically take a more collective approach to how they get engaged with the market. So basically to create a much more sustainable food system. So if anybody can, knows people working in in sustainable food. Um, I'd like to connect with those folks, especially if they're using any of these tools that we've been chatting about. Uh, I have to jump off uh, in a minute or so to the next call, but I'll just uh, reinforce my uh, initial observation. We need to streamline our information architecture. You know, I mean, as, as community, uh, uh, Activator, like you, you have the wiki, you have the Facebook, you have LinkedIn, you have, we're not concentrating anywhere and we are not thinking who will use what, you know, and we need to prioritize there. So, so there are a couple of opportunities, make it simple, make it elegant, you know, and so on. Um, and, and as I said, we can learn from somebody who has done it before. <laughs> in in the information design, look at, at the uh, BMC and strategizer, but even before strategizer, it was very clean architecture in, in one place, two places, and so on. You know, the folks on the book, then they, you know, the book had its place and, and so on. It wasn't all over the place. So I think that would be the most bang for the buck. <laughs> Agreed. I'm a Virgo INTJ. I would like things to be a little bit more. <laughs> okay, uh, anybody else? Any themes that we should discuss in the future around this sort of community development? Yeah, um, in terms um, of like my experience with the canvas, I've got a lot of experience actually implementing the canvas in consultancy projects in very large national and international um, organizations and conglomerates. Next steps, um, I'd love to have a conversation with Nicole and maybe one or two others to look at how we can, how we can help um, get an online collaborative version of the canvas. Following that, I've got a lot of, one of my observations of the, um, 
uh, First Explorer's Toolkit is that it doesn't put the canvas in the context of a wider process. For example, how do you transform a business strategy? How do you do so um, agile software development? We've got a lot of experience of actually using the canvas within the context of these wider processes. And also, um, I'm also thinking about how we can create consultancy tools so that a lot of you guys, a lot of people in the um, wider group can actually have the canvas as part of a consultancy approach. So you can really start to help other organizations have impact. Um, we, ha we haven't just implemented the canvas in um, commercial organizations. We've also been using it for institutions and not-for-profits as well. So that's brief briefly my three things. Help get the canvas online, um, help put the canvas in context and help create an actual approach uh, for other flourishing consultants and researchers and facilitators. Yeah, I love that. Um, uh, because of the way I think and how everything's connected, I just wish sometimes I could take my hat off and then you could see what I'm talking about. And that's probably why I'm involved in virtual and augmented reality. I would love to create a version of a campus where you, you can step inside of it and you can see your organization from all the different perspectives from wherever you're standing within the canvas. Yeah, and again, we've got a lot of technology to help create uh, what we call a collective intelligence view of an organization. But this goes into ontology. I won't go into this now, but I'm going to enjoy the conversations with some of you guys in terms mm -hmm. of like, you know, sharing our thinking about where we are with our techno technological developments. One or two more minutes. Any burning thoughts on um, where wh what's missing in the future or something that's amazing in the future that we forgot about or something that's amazing going on right now that we ha we're not celebrating maybe? <laughs> I think you need to celebrate where you guys have come from, like, like where the group has evolved to. I think it's important to recognize that you know, the concept of flourishing and we're not sort of in our lexicon, except for in sort of thing, it's becoming more prevalent. Did we lose Nicole? After there was a ton of those pioneers. And I just want to say that. Did anybody, did everybody else catch that? No, sorry. Um, Nicole, you broke up. Would you happen to mind repeating that so we can have it recorded? Uh, well, maybe if you can still hear us, Nicole, you could jot that down and I can make sure that I get it in the notes. So we have a really good um, thought about uh, celebration and where we came from, from Nicole. We'll, we'll highlight that <laughs> later. Any other final, I don't, I don't want to say final thoughts, any burning thoughts? This is your last chance. We're going to wrap up. Okay, well, um, I really appreciate the fact that everyone came on this call today. It was a bit of a gamble. We weren't sure um, who would participate, if anyone would participate. Um, is there an interest in having more uh, sessions like this? I see head no heads nodding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then um, we'll, we'll try to sprinkle these in, uh, maybe as part of the regular cycle of meetings and maybe some side meetings. I know that um, there's gonna, hopefully going to be some side stuff on the hex cards and I'm waiting to hear something about that coming forward because I'm really interested in and, and maybe a little bit more um, connection to sort of the newest people. I think most people on this group besides David and maybe myself are fairly significantly engaged in the group and so uh, hearing a little bit more from the new people it might be intimidating for new people to join this group because we're usually in a sort of a heavy discussion from a speaker. Um, and so maybe this, this more conversational style might um, ease people into understanding how to be a part of the group as well. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming today. I really appreciate um, all the faces that I got to see. And the fact that normally when I'm in these meetings, I'm in the background uh, making things happen. And um, I, or I'm in a discussion about the Institute and funding or certain aspects of what's going on. And so just to have a face and a, and a uh, explanation of what people are doing has very been very, very helpful for me. So I very much appreciate everybody attending. And I will talk to you in one month's time. If I don't hear from you first, I'm, I'm going to connect with maybe a couple with you based on my notes that I took uh, for the meeting. Uh, the meeting and the transcript will come out very soon. And with that, I'll close the meeting. If anyone has any final thoughts, feel free. But if you need to drop off, that's great. <laughs>